Hello everyone, this is the sixth lecture in real analysis and we are going to discuss the density of rational numbers in R and the density of irrational numbers in R. So we are going to prove both statements in this video. So the first statement that we are going to prove is theorem 1. So let A and B be real numbers such that A is less than B, then there exists a rational number R, so there exists R in Q such that r is between a and b, strictly between a and b. So in other words, if we have an interval, an open interval from a to b, uh, it will always contain a rational number. So it doesn't matter how small the interval is, there will always be a rational number uh, in this interval. So this is why it's called density. Uh, so rational numbers are dense in R because it doesn't matter how small an interval AB is, there will always be a rational number in it. So let us think about uh, uh, this theorem before we prove it. So we have two numbers A and B. Uh, and B minus A is the distance between A and B. So B minus A is the distance. So if this distance is larger than 1, then it makes sense that there will be an integer number in this interval, n in z. Okay. So uh, the first case that we are going to consider is when the distance between b and a is larger than 1. So case 1, b minus a is larger than 1 we will show that there exists an integer n such that n is in between a and b, strictly between a and b. And um, so we are going to use the strategy that, that is similar to the strategy we used when we proved Archimedean principle. And the video where we discussed Ar Archimedean principle is linked in the description to this video in case you want to watch it. So our strategy is going to be the following. So let us consider the set E that contains all the integers such that they are less than B. Okay, so we have here the number B and we have all of the integers that are less than B in this set E. Uh, so clearly the set E is bounded from above by B, uh, so it has a supremum, and by one of the previous theorems that we proved before, which is also linked in the video down below, the supremum belongs to the set E. So because E is non-empty, and I am going to leave that for you to verify, and bounded from above, there exists n, that is the supremum of the set E, uh, a real number. So this is by the completeness axiom, by the completeness axiom. Okay, uh, however, by a previous theorem, this n actually belongs to the set E. So by a previous theorem, because E is a subset of Z and has a supremum, n equals to supremum of E is a is an element of E, which is in Z. So N is an integer. Okay, so on the picture, N is going to be here. So what we are, what we want to show now, uh, because we are trying to show that N is strictly between A and B. So clearly N is less than B, uh, because B is an upper bound for the set E. 
So because n is in E, n is less than b, because every element of E is less than b. So we want to show that n is larger than a. Okay, so n is larger than a. So we're going to show this by contradiction. By contradiction. So suppose that n is less than or equal to a. Then we have this situation that we have the point b, we have the point a, and n is less than a, less than or equal to a. So then the element n plus 1 uh, is less than b, so then n plus 1 belongs to the set E. So then n plus 1 is less than or equal to a plus 1, which is less than b, so n plus 1 is below it belongs to e however we did say that n was the supremum of e so n plus one cannot be in e and that's a contradiction so that finishes the proof of case one so we showed the following if b minus a is larger than one if the distance between the point a and b is larger than one then there exists an integer such that it is strictly between a and b. And of course, this integer is a rational number. So uh, we did show that there exists a rational number between, between a and b in case the distance between uh, a and b is larger than 1. So now case 2 that we need to consider is the case when b minus a is less than or equal to 1. So somehow, maybe, we can try to re and reduce this case to the, the previous case. So we have the a and b, and the distance between a and b, d, is less than 1. So perhaps what we can do is we can multiply this distance by a, an integer number p and rescale the whole situation. So if we multiply d by some number p in such a way, uh, so that p d is larger than 1, then we are going to get p a and p b, and this distance p d is larger than 1. And there will be an integer number n on this interval from p a to p b. Uh, so, all, of course, all of this was scratch. Scratch. So, for the clean proof, uh, let us try to justify that such a natural number p exists. So, and this is true by Archimedean property, which, by the way, it is discussed in a different video, and that video is linked in the description to this video. So, by the Archimedean property, there exists a natural number p such that p times d, which is the distance between a and b, which is b minus a, is larger than 1, okay? So then pb minus pa is larger than 1, uh, and by the previous case, by case 1, there exists n, an integer, such that n is strictly between p a and p b. But then this is true if and only if n over p is strictly between a and b. So the rational number r, which is n over p, it is strictly between a and b. And this is exactly what we wanted to show. So this finishes our proof, so QED. So our second theorem, theorem 2, is about the density of irrational numbers in R. So again, let A and B be two real numbers such that A is less than B. Then there exists an irrational number Let us call it uh, alpha in R minus Q, 
such that alpha is strictly between a and b. So there are infinitely many rational numbers and there are also infinitely many irrational numbers. And moreover, the irrational numbers are dense in R. So if we take an interval from A to B, an open interval, there will be an irrational number on that interval. Okay, so let us try to prove this. Uh, so we're going to try to use the previous theorem. So by the previous theorem, theorem 1, there exists a rational number r such that r is strictly between a and b. Okay, so we have this situation where we have a and b and there exists a rational number r in q such that r is strictly between a and b. So uh, from this a rational number r, we are going to construct an irrational number. The only number that we have proven is irrational so far is square root of 2. So somehow we want to use the square root of 2 to modify this number r to get an irrational number that would still be between a and b. So what we can do is we can look at the number r plus square root of 2 over n. So this quotient square root of 2 over n, we can make it very small by choosing n very large. So that means that we will add a very small number to r in such a way that we still stay within the interval from a to b. Okay, so we want to have r plus square root of 2 over n to be less than b which is equivalent to saying square root of 2 over n is less than b minus r, which is equivalent to saying that n b minus r is greater than square root of 2. So all of this here is scratch, of course. So there exists a natural number n such that this inequality is true by the Archimedean principle. So by the... Archimedean principle, there exists a natural number n such that n times b minus r is larger than square root of 2, which is true if and only if r plus square root of 2 over n is less than b. And this, uh, this if and only if statement is true simply because we can move backwards in this chain of inequalities here. You see in the scratch. Okay, so hence, for the number alpha, which is r plus square root of 2 over n, alpha is less than b, and it's actually greater than r, which is greater than a. So alpha is strictly between a and b. So also, alpha is irrational. And um, we, we are going to prove this by contradiction. So suppose that alpha is rational then r plus square root of 2 over n is equal to some q, some rational number, which implies that square root of 2 over n is q minus r, which implies that square root of 2 is q minus r times n, which is a rational number. However, square root of 2 is irrational, so that's a contradiction. So hence... Alpha is an irrational number, and alpha is between A and B, which is what we wanted to show, so which finishes the proof, so QED. So this is all for this video. Thank you for watching it. Please put a like underneath it, subscribe to this channel, support this work. In the comments below, please leave your uh, questions and uh, suggestions about what you would like to see on this channel, and be good at math.